everyone, welcome back. Today I want to talk about blue. Right here we have what I would guess is probably the most used super blue. Um, it's what's considered a cold blue. Now there's different ways of bluing things. When you, you know, you see a nice blue firearm, usually that's done with a rust bluing or it's done with some bluing salts it's a pretty involved process um it's considered hot bluing and it definitely is a more durable finish but for some touch-ups or some just you know standard items that you have laying around the house like a, you know a screwdriver or something that you want blued you know this stuff is fine um you know, even a little touch up on a gun if you, you know, if you must, you could use this. But um, I wouldn't blue a whole gun or a barrel or anything with a cold blue, with one exception. We have here Mark Lee's Express Blue 1. Okay. Now, this was designed for bluing double barrels and fine rifles. Um, this has no mercury, <coughs> excuse me, this has no mercury in it. Um, I've used this. I'm going to show you something I did with this. This stuff is amazing. Now, this is considered a cold blue, um, but it's really not. I mean, you you know, you have to set up a little tank or a pot with, uh, you know, very hot water. I'm, I'm going to say like 250 degrees. Um, obviously, any of this stuff that you use, you, you know, read the um, directions. So we got here uh, warm metal pots to 150 to 200 degrees. Okay, so what it's actually doing is it's actually rusting the metal. Okay, instead of a red oxide, which we all know rust, right, is like a reddish color, it's a black oxide. Okay, this stuff is amazing. You know, after five, six coats, whatever, you know, each time you do it, it gets darker and darker. It produces an excellent, durable finish. Now, blued items can still rust. It does, it's not like, oh, wow, I'm never going to get rust on it. Um, but it does uh, make it less susceptible to red oxide, okay? So let me show you what I got here. So here I have a barrel from a revolver. This was done with the Express Blue. And it is gorgeous. It came out great. This was just this uh, old barrel I had laying around. Um, you know, it's all in the finish too, right? Like this has some deep marks in it that never came out. But if you do proper preparation, right? As in anything, when you're painting or anything, the prep, it's all in the prep. But it comes out really, really awesome. It's almost black. So that's the Express Blue. Then we got here just a piece of bar stock what's considered in the white and I'm going to show you what the super blue would look like this is just a little cotton swab you want to try not to dip it back and forth and contaminate this you'd want to put a little bit of this into a bowl or something and you should wear gloves I have some gloves here let me just throw this one on while I'm holding it. And of course, follow the directions. But as you can see, it does give you a nice blue finish. No heating involved. I mean, you could heat the metal. But again, follow the directions. I believe you have to uh, rinse it off after each one, dry it. And you want to make sure that you prep the metal good, like I said, and then you want to degrease it, okay? Degreasing it's very important because if there's any type of oil or anything on there, it's not gonna come out great. Now, as you can see, it leaves some splotches. Again, compared to this, you can see the shine that comes off of this one compared to this one. Again, you can get this pretty dark. 
for something like I said, you know, a screwdriver or something you're finishing, <clears throat> excuse me, it works fine. But if you're going to do something like a gun barrel, you're going to want to try this Express Blue, um, number one. Another thing with this, this finish is pretty superficial. It'll, it'll definitely wear off a heck of a lot quicker than this. And this would wear off quicker than, let's say, you know, a rust bluing process. Because it, it just penetrates deeper into the metal. But again, this Mark Lee, it's pretty much what I would consider a Colt bluing. It's really, really durable. Really durable. So there's just quick, you know, I didn't go into all of it. Like I said, it's, it's a pretty involved process if you're going to, you know, blue gun parts and stuff like that. Some of it, some of the stuff they use is toxic. I've used a lot of different products to try. Um, in my opinion, this Express Blue number one absolutely blows them all away as far as the cold blues go, even though you're going to heat it up. Um, it's still considered a cold blue. But uh, the Super Blue for, for light touch-ups and for, you know, just some tools you might have made, a punch or, you know, uh, you're refurbishing a screwdriver or something. It looks pretty cool to, uh, to blue it. And then, of course, you follow the directions, you wash it down, dry it. Again, um, little steel wool in between. And then you oil it. And uh, you want to keep all your metals oiled because that's what's going to preserve it and stop it from getting the red oxide on it. But uh, there you go. So you got the Birchwood Casey Super Blue, the Mark Lee Express Blue, which in my opinion is the best. And don't forget to get some kind of degreaser. This is specifically called a cleaner degreaser. You could use denatured alcohol. Um, you know, I wouldn't use isopropyl alcohol or any of that stuff. It, it's not, like, pure enough to, to really, really clean it good. So, uh, again, there you go. Just a quick little thing on bluing. Uh, you know, I would definitely advise if you're doing a firearm or something, you know, use this Express Blue. Um, you know, read up on it. It's a pretty involved process, like I said. But uh, with this stuff, it's really, really easy to do at home. So there you go. Thanks for watching, everyone. Appreciate it. Hope you all have a great day.